motivation at its finest. Yeah. All right. So, um, cool things I noticed about the test as a whole. Like, kids did really well. I mean, like, in in in, in the grand scheme of things, like, what like what do you what do you think they did poorly? Though? Um, I just think that like the students who did poorly, like, it's, like, David emailed me, like, I'd like to see, like, the low. Yeah, I was going to tell you, I'll, I'll oh, send them. you'll send them? I, I can send Great. Yeah. yeah. And I was, to see the student, the gaps in learning, and I was, like, and I emailed him back, like, just so you know, there are no gaps in learning for the red students. It's that they don't understand what a number is. Mm -hmm. I just emailed him that. Um, because even on tutoring Monday when I had the tutors working with students after school like the tutors literally told me like I wrote down the number 22 and asked students the two students that she was working with to read the number and they couldn't read the number they were like two tenths two tens like they couldn't read 22 so she's literally going to be working with them today on just reading numbers yeah so it's not like, oh, what's the gap in learning? Like, what do I need to reteach? It's like, that's why I showed, I picked out like these 60s. Because here I think we could cl close some things. Yeah, for but sure. But then there are the students who got like 30s mm -hmm. or 10s. And I'm like, that's not closing a gap. That's having them on first that's, grade. That's like teaching yes. them the basics. Yeah. Yep. So that's why... I, I mean, I did include a thirty, but mm -hmm. but this uh, so there were there were a few students when I looked, mm -hmm. um, like they just made simple mistakes. Yeah. Uh, some, some of them, them. some of them, yeah. uh, and others just like made like they they just didn't know what they were doing. Yeah, at all. Uh, and so basically, like let's start by like ultimately I looked at I I narrowed it down to like two questions I looked at. Okay. Um, I, think I know which one. Which one? I'm sure number nine was one. Oh yeah, of them. for sure. <laughs> and then and the, the partner to that one, which was number five. Number five? Yeah. So okay. let me show you how like I came to that. Cool. So I was just like, you know, I'm not gonna look at the test as a whole. Um, cause you know, like I look, as I looked at, uh, as I looked at the standards, like for the most part, like you had mid to mid seventies to like high eighties mm -hmm. on, uh, as far as like mastery for all of those teaks, all of the teaks except one, which was the five three. Yeah. yeah. Which is like, what do, what do they have to do for five three? So they have to, that's a readiness standard, I know that for sure. And they're mm -hmm. multiplying decimals, mm -hmm. usually three digit by two digit. Usually three digit by two yeah. digit, yep. And that's what I saw as well. Um, and then like sometimes multiplying whole numbers by, uh, by decimals, five decimals yeah. as well, yeah. yeah. So that was what I saw. So like, I don't know if you've ever seen this report, this is actually the first time I've seen it too. Um, but I pulled this report and it's really cool and it shows um, like where each student oh, is. That like, is cool. Um, so like the question? Yep, or by, the teak? By, by, the teak. By, teak. by teak. By teak. Yep. And it shows each student like, I swear I probably would have posted student names in my classes if I had this. Um, like it's super cool. So yeah, I probably will print this like more often. So just for yeah, could you send future, re yeah, I'll send okay. it to you. But for future reference, it is the, um, so if you go to reports here, and then you go to the teacher comparison report mm -hmm. and then just type in your name okay. uh, under teacher and then all of your students will populate that yeah. report, report will populate and then you can put it in the excel or you can put it in the pdf however you want to do it but um, i still have like mm -hmm. six tests that aren't in there but mm -hmm. i'm sure they're probably in the red yeah, they'll probably they'll, they'll probably they probably will look very similar to this. Yeah, like it won't probably deviate too much. Not too much, but um, I think I have a couple more in the red. Okay. Um, yeah, and that and that's fine. Um, but I just wanted to show you that because like, I've, cool. I've never so even teacher seen that comparison teacher comparison uh, teacher peer comparison oh, teacher peer comparison. Yeah. 
and then put my name. And then, yep, filter it by your, all of your students, by your name. If not, it'll show like, since all of fifth grade have all of the students, it'll print like 70 pages. Mm -hmm. you don't want that. So, uh, for this particular standard, we said that they have to, um, they have to be able to multiply two digits by three digit decimals mm -hmm. or like decimals by whole numbers. Yep. For the most part, and like that was that was what I was looking at as I was looking at numbers, specifically numbers five and nine, okay. which are related to the T. Yep. Because uh, like I said, every the students did pretty well on everything else. Um, so um, looking at your, do you, do you have your pencil out for this one? For this test? Um, do you have it handy? No, we could just use it. That's okay. We can use it. Like, um, well, this is pretty perfect. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So let's look at this student's uh, uh, exemplar for number five. Is there anything that um, you would add to this or anything that this student could have done better or anything that uh, this student did that you didn't do? So she circled the numbers. I would have also had her box the word each mm -hmm. so she knows that, I mean, she knew to put that correctly, but I would have had her box that and I would have had her underline the question. Okay. How many cups of sugar do all the cupcakes contain? Mm -hmm. I probably also would have boxed all because all means total. Mm -hmm. So then they should know right away that they're looking for the total. And so if they know that, they know they're doing multiplication because they have the groups, 38, and they have the each, one in 53 hundredths. Okay. And then she multiplied it perfectly. She great. has the correct decimal placement. Um, yeah. Well, no secret. When I was uh, <laughs> when I was working out this problem myself, I was like, I was like, why isn't my number? I kept getting like fifty seven point something. I was like, why isn't this working for me? Why You're not this carrying working a one. For me? No, you I was put the zero. no, I was adding three oh. times three instead of multiplying three times three. Happens to so everyone. Uh, okay, what about this one? So for this one, she did underline the question mm -hmm. in this one. Um, Per would be the same thing as each as well. Mm -hmm. so I have box. Yeah. I mean per. Uh huh. But she has her triangle. She knows she's multiplying. Um. I mean, I guess one thing that maybe so she understands the decimal placement on her own. But something that I try to tell students to do is mm -hmm. to write like two places after decimal. Mm -hmm. So that means I need two places after in my answer. So here we have two places and here we have one place. So that would be three after. Mm. Okay. So like, so just making that mental note that they need to be able to do that. But even though this student did do that. Yeah. You know, she knew how to do yeah, it. Yeah, of, of course. But, um, so okay. mostly, but like as far as the math is concerned, like mm -hmm. there's nothing you would have changed about that other than like. No, I mean, I'm wondering if there's an example of using the area model because they also um, could have used most of the high kids use this. Use I, the know. Area model. I know, I know. Um, and the kids who did use the area model mess up. They they struggle with I it. I know. Um, there was one who did it really well. Um, I'm thinking of teaching them another way that I actually wanted to teach them at the start. This kid like really blew up the area model, Cassandra. Yeah. Um, she did not. Yeah, she she didn't do she didn't set it up properly here. And then like she she did the standard algorithm oh, correctly. correctly. Oh she no she did it correctly. She just used the wrong number. Oh really? Yeah she used thirty two instead of thirty eight but like I checked her math. And her it's math, right? Her math is correct. Huh, interesting. So okay. she did all the correct math, but like used the wrong number. It was just a simple mental mistake. And then here she just added. Um, but that wasn't it. That was another student. Oh, I think it was this kid. Yes. Yeah. Scarlett? Where did she? Nope, maybe it wasn't that kid. Or maybe Michelle. Yeah, I think that's it. Cause she did it wrong on number nine, but then did it correctly on number yeah. five. Yeah, that was her. Okay. Yep. So she decomposed 153, 
so this is all right. Mm -hmm. And so she and she got the correct answer. Yeah. Right. And so like she she understands at least like from this problem she understands the area model. But then when she went here, so she, she didn't decompose this right. Right. It should have been eighty and fifty. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, 850, 850, sorry, 850. 850. Yeah. And so that, like, that, that made, that made a ton of sense. Like, um, it's still, I think the thing that I was saying was, uh, like, one, she was also multiplying wrong here, too. So, like, she put the, yep. she put the 20 times 80, 80 here, like, oh, yeah. like, 16, 1600, that's, like, that's correct, but yeah. in the wrong spot, wrong spot, and so, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure where this 55 came from. Uh, <laughs> so like she she made a lot of like she made a ton of mistakes here. Yeah. Um, and like it, it seemed for whatever reason this problem was more confusing to them. Like I, I, and I truly cannot understand why. I can't. I don't know. Um, I don't think they understood the wording of it because it said she. Goes to a coffee shop, not ship, to buy coffee beans. She purchases two and five tenths pounds. Pounds. Mm -hmm. How much did the coffee beans cost? Mm -hmm. They were confused by the question. I think if it had said how many, how much? Yeah, I guess how much. Did the pounds of coffee beans cost? Maybe. How much did she spend on pounds of coffee beans? I don't know. I know. Like my struggle is, I still think this is very straightforward. I do too, but they um, really messed up on it a lot. Yeah, and so like, I just wasn't sure, like, because so many kids. There were, and here's the, also the struggle too, right? It was like so many kids got number five right. I know. But I. But like they didn't do the math correct. Oh, a lot of them guessed. Yeah. I literally wrote that on some of these. Yeah, I saw. I saw. Um, there was another student. Maybe this student. Nah, it wasn't this kid. That's the one that guessed on everything. Yeah. Um, it's probably. Maybe actually. There's another kid who oh so this is good. Like he just confused the numbers. Like he did he did all the math correct. But then just confused the numbers there. And then This is all set up correctly. Again, like this is right, it's set up correctly. I can't I couldn't I couldn't pinpoint so he his mistake here. Well, he's not lining up place value. There should be a zero here, and then mm -hmm. it should be five times five is 25, so the five should be here. Mm -hmm. 40, 42 should be, everything's off. Everything's off, okay. Which which makes sense, because he got such a huge number there, and I was like, mm. I wasn't sure like what, what, what he was trying to do there. But like, have you, what, what ways have you taught them? To multiply? That, to multiply those numbers. Yeah. Just like I know you've done area model and standard algorithm. And standard algorithm. But when I you... wanted to teach them lattice from the start. Mm -hmm. um, so lattice, have you learned mm -hmm. in lattice okay. multiplication? I have one girl who uses it. So, so you're still drawing a box, but I'm pretty sure you literally write 153 and 38. Yes. Okay. Then you divide the boxes in half. I've seen this. So this is the tens and this is the ones. So three times one is three, so zero in the tens, three in the ones. Three times five is 15, three times three is nine. Eight times one is eight, 
8 times 5 is 40, 8 times 3 is 24. And then you just add down. So 4, 11, 6, 10, 18, 5. And that's your answer, 5, 8, 1, 4. Obviously, you need to remember decimal placement. There are two places. So you add it mm -hmm. like that way. Yeah, and you, you have to carry numbers. Okay. Mm -hmm. so because they're messing up so much with the zeros mm -hmm. and the adding. Yep, yep, I saw that too. So I actually wanted to teach them this from the start. Gabby was like, well, the area model is like more conceptual. I don't think it is at all. Yeah, at all. I think like I think it helps them understand grouping right when you when you're multiplying mm -hmm. right because like the area model is how i do math in my head right you know sure. um, but like it helps them so it helps them understand like i can group numbers this way to multiply yeah. them easier um but like they're still they they don't know how to set up the model correctly mm -hmm. So if they don't, they don't understand how to use the area model because they don't understand place value. Yeah. And when you don't understand place value, it's hard to set up that grouping model. So, yeah, so maybe this something. might help them understand place value a little bit better. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe you, should, you could try this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, I like it. I've seen them before and I like it. Um, I think it. I like it a lot. It's, I think especially it, with big numbers. Mm -hmm. It's so much easier. Yeah, it makes it it makes it really clear like what I should be adding and like what what I should be doing. You know what I mean? Because if I only see that I got a zero, five, four, and eight here, you know, that's what I'm. That's all I'm supposed to add. Yeah, I have one girl who uses it. Does she? You taught it to her, or she? She did, knew it. She knew it on her own. Um, yeah, I, I like this a lot. I mean, you could try it. I think, I think, ultimately, if this is this is one more way way to reteach it, yeah. you know, that might be cool. Yeah. Um, so like, I think like the clear gap is that like students struggle one with place value and then two with like just multiplying um, decimals. I don't see the I don't necessarily see the issue with multiplying. It's specifically with multiplying decimals. I know. Right? Um, and That's so, like all the intervention stuff I've been giving them mm -hmm. is this multiplying decimal yeah. in the word problem because mm -hmm. that's what they're really mm -hmm. struggling with. So if you were to reteach this, you would reteach it this way, right? I think so. The only issue is like I don't want to reteach the whole class it. So I think this is something I need to do during intervention. Mm -hmm. And I need to like maybe pull like 20. 20 kids one day and then like the other 20 the next day. Mm -hmm. I just don't think I can do it during class. Wow. I'm like nervous that I'm getting like far behind. I don't know. Uh, how far are you behind in fixing it? Um, probably I will be around four days behind. Four days behind. Four days behind Gabby and DeMont, or just probably Gabby? just Gabby. I don't think DeMont. I think she's doing something. So, um, I don't know for sure. Maybe he's maybe he's the same thing as Gabby. So maybe it's both of them. Yeah. But it's, uh, it's not. That's not a big deal. Yeah. Um, is there is there a spot that like we could use to reteach this to, to help them understand another concept? I don't know because we're doing fractions now, so it's pretty different. Oh. Yeah. That's the only issue. Probably. Like, I could wait mm -hmm. and do this more in the spring. Mm -hmm. I could also do that. Yeah. Um, oh. I think it's. I think it could be purposeful to reach it during the intervention. Yeah. Like, let's try it. See, yeah. You know, let's just and, see how it goes. Right. Um, I don't think. I don't think that's a big deal because, like, I mean. Like truth be told, you know, there there a lot of them are simple mistakes, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And so like I think you if you continue you can continue to have them do this during intervention. Right. Just continue to have your student checkers, um, uh, which is cool. Um, do you think your student checkers are able to like help them understand this a little bit better? How's that system been working? Have you been using it more? 
the student checkers during intervention. Well, I don't know if the other teachers are really using it. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. I have student checkers with me during intervention right. as well, and that's great. Yeah. It's I have two with me, mm -hmm. and I give them the answer keys, and they have to check like. We, we do one thing at a time. So literally they get a check for their annotations, they get a check for their triangle, mm -hmm. they get a check for setting up the multiplication correctly, they get a check for the right area model, they get a check for the right addition. Fair enough. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, like, if you, it, like if you have to break it down into those steps, yeah. like, you know, but it helps kids pinpoint their errors though too, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So like if they, if you're stopping so if you're stopping a kid at each major step, mm -hmm. right, but, and they have to get that checked, so it, yeah, that that helps them pinpoint their errors. Yeah, this is what we were doing. So it's like a check for the annotation, a check for the gag, and a check for the right answer. Yeah. And that makes sense, right? Lots of checks. <laughs> so talk me through like how you would teach this. Um. So I would say that here is my issue with the decimal point. So many of them get like thrown off by it. Mm -hmm. And I want to tell them like, for the time being, pretend that it's not there. Mm -hmm. But then they pretend that it's not there forever. <laughs> so I want to say like, Pretend the decimal's not there and you're just multiplying 153 times 38. We're gonna worry about the decimal later, once we have our answer. And then I would tell them that when they're setting up their box, which is similar to the area model in terms of drawing it. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna stop you. Yeah. I think something that might be effective for mm -hmm. you is to, is to model for them a little bit differently. Okay. Um, and so like, you've done the thing a lot before, right? Mm -hmm. Like where you would just like show the kids your thinking yeah. as you as you model through the problem. Mm -hmm. So what you might do is uh, like show them this way, mm -hmm. and then like show them your thinking as you're walking through the problem, mm -hmm. right? And so like um, you can think through the whole process with them mm -hmm. and. Have them pay attention to your thinking, not necessarily what you're doing, but your thinking, right? And so, like, make and like put an emphasis on the connection of I'm not going to use my decimal. I'm going to forget about my decimal right now because that's going to help me multiply a little bit easier. Okay. Then when you get back to the bottom, yeah. Oh, I got to remember my decimal. Okay. So how many places do I have? I gotta remember that I have two places. Yeah. So I'm gonna make sure that I have two places in my uh, after my decimal and I'm gonna place my decimal there. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. Um, is that helpful? Mm -hmm. Like, does that make it like, uh, I, think, I think this way is so simple. Like the setup is yeah. so simple. All right, like. Well, they need to understand that they need to draw a box with for a three by two number, like three digit by two digit, because some yeah. of them don't necessarily like get how to even draw the box correctly. Mm -hmm. So they would maybe try and just draw like mm -hmm. a square with two by two. Mm -hmm. um, so they need to understand that like, we're multiplying a three digit number by a two digit number. Mm -hmm. So we need a three digit by two, two digit, digit box. box. Right, mm -hmm. and so and and that's even part of your think aloud. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, how many like how many decimal places or how many digits do I see? I see that there are three digits by. They two don't even digits, know. I, right? I keep using the word digit, and then I realize they don't even know what that means. Mm. How many numbers are? Okay. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's fair, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but even still, like I see two number, like even though this is technically one number, yeah. but <laughs> I see three numbers. <laughs> I see in that number three. Number. Number. Um, but um, like just model that piece, right? Yeah. And so um, what I'd like, you, like to have you do is like model it right now for me. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> On the board? Mm -hmm. okay. Do you need a few moments to get your, get your thoughts together? Um, I don't think so. Okay. Are you gonna like stop me by? 
Uh, I mean, if I if I think I need to. Okay. Um, but I just want to see you like so. Give the instructions too of like what students should be doing as you're as you're doing this, right? Okay. Um, also, like if you feel like it's helpful, since this is something that like the 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 strategy is new. If you yeah. think it's helpful to like I probably would. like go over the strategy first and then model your thinking about using the strategy, it's up to you. This is probably what I was doing. Okay. I was like put on the spot. Okay, cool. Go for it. All right, guys. So we're going to multiply a three-digit number by a two-digit number. And we've done this using standard algorithm and the area model. But today I'm going to show you a third way of doing this, which might make a little bit more sense to some of you. So for the time being, I'm going to forget that the decimal place is in this number. Mm -hmm. And I want you guys to do the same thing. So you have this problem written on your paper, and I'm gonna have you guys just copy down everything that I'm doing while you're also listening to me. Would you prefer that they're not copying down and they're just listening? Um, I want them to copy down. Well, so what you want them, what you want them to do is write about your thinking. <laughs> well, or like be able to tell like what you're thinking. Okay. Does that make sense? Like. It does. I don't think it's practical for them to be writing down like Miss Gladstone is thinking about the decimal placement. Mm -hmm. She's thinking about that she needs to draw a three by two digit box because mm -hmm. there are three, I, they're not so, gonna make that connection. So make it for them, right? So, tell them what to write? No, no, no. So what you can do is like step out of your model and say like, what was I thinking about when I did this part? Does it make sense? So if you want them to copy down what you do, right? Like, cause the, cause the whole goal of the think aloud is to get them to think like you're thinking. Does it make sense? So you want them, you want them thinking like you, so they need to know what you're thinking. Mm -hmm. So if you are just modeling for them and saying like, this is this, like I'm gonna do this next, yeah. right? They're not thinking like they, they're not thinking like right. you, they're just gonna do what you do right. what you do, right? And so what you can do is say like, for example, um, guys, I'm gonna model this, I'm gonna model my thinking for you. Uh, for this problem of multiplying a three-digit decimal by a two-digit or a three-digit number by a two-digit number mm -hmm. as I'm modeling what I'd like to see you do is write exactly what I see what you see on the board right and then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start by saying hmm I see that there's a decimal here so I'm going to forget about the decimal to make it easier for me to multiply these two numbers so the first thing I notice is that there are three digits here and there are two digits here. So I'm gonna draw a box to represent those numbers. So I'm gonna draw this box and I should see you all drawing this box as well. So these three represent my three digit number. These two rows represent my two digit number. So I'm gonna put my two digit number here, right? Other side. Other side, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna put my two digit number here, and then I'm gonna put my three digit number here, mm -hmm. right? But then, and then you know, and then yeah. you continue. But you see how it was like thinking about like what I'm gonna do versus right. Like, but they're just ultimately copying down. What you're I don't think that right. they're necessarily. And, and now, what I'm going to do is, like, what I might do is, I'm going to stop here okay. and say, as why I was I... doing this problem, okay. what was I thinking, or why did I do this? Okay, okay, okay. Does that make sense? Sure. sure. Okay. So I could be like, why did I decide to forget about the place value, uh, the decimal point for the time being? Mm -hmm. Why did I draw a three, a box with three? spots on the front yeah. and two spots on the side mm -hmm. because I have three digits in one number and two exactly. digits in the other. Okay. Got Does it. that make sense now? Yeah, so okay. just stopping 
I think stop pausing between mm -hmm. different points in exactly. the problem. Yep. And then once we go over that, all of that thinking, we would move on to the next part. Yeah, that was so. That was also one thing. I, uh, I don't know if you picked up on my tone. Mm -hmm. That um, I think is like it. Like I don't know why it makes sense, but like why it helps people, like helps students see the thinking more. Okay. Is like I vary my tone, right? Yeah. And so like when I'm asking them questions, I'm speaking of, uh, in a very different tone from when I'm modeling for them, right? So if I ask this question. Why did I do such and such, such and such? I'm like looking for specific answers, whereas like I'm asking them. Yeah. Whereas like my higher tone is my thoughts. Okay. You see what I mean? So as I'm doing this, mm -hmm. da, 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 you know, like okay. my tone is different so that they okay. can see the difference of like I'm thinking. I'm thinking versus I'm talking to you. Okay. 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 Yeah. Give it a try. You want me to start from the beginning? Uh, sure. Okay. <laughs> Is it awkward? <laughs> it's just funny. Oh, okay. All right, guys. So today we are going to learn a new multiplication method in order to multiply a three-digit by a two-digit number. So I'm going to model this for you. And while I'm thinking, your pen or pencil is to paper copying down what I'm doing. For the time being, I'm going to think to myself, well, I see a decimal point here, but in order to make it easier for myself to multiply these two numbers, I'm going to forget about the decimal point. We'll come back to it later. I see here that I have a number with three digits, and I also am multiplying it by a number with two digits. So I'm thinking I'm going to need to draw a box where I can represent a three-digit by a two-digit number. So you guys are also drawing this box on your paper. So I know that one and 53 hundredths has three digits. So I'm gonna need three spaces on top of my box. I know that 38 has two digits, which means I'm going to need two spots on the side of my box. Now, I can easily place my numbers on the sides of my boxes. So someone remind me, why did I forget about the decimal place for the time being? Uh, because, it's, because it's easier for you to multiply. Am I going to eventually need to return to the decimal place? Yes. Yes, we will get to that. Why or how did I know to draw a box with three spaces on top and two spaces on the side? How did I know to do that? I'm gonna push you, I'm gonna push you right here. Okay. Turn and talk to your partner. How did I know okay. to draw? Turn and talk to your partner. How did I know to draw a box that has three spaces on the top and two spaces on the side? Go. All right, someone share out, please. Uh, you, because you have a three digit number and a two digit number. So three on top and two on the side. Wonderful. Perfect. And see. Okay. Alright, I'm gonna stop you there because I think you can do the rest okay. pretty easily. Um, yeah, that but, makes more sense. But does it does it did that feel different? Yeah. Okay. I think just like pausing at certain points instead of just doing the whole problem. Mm -hmm. right. Exactly. Okay. Alright. Cool. How do you feel? Good. Okay. <laughs> cool. You have any questions? Um no. Okay. I think that's like yeah, I think I'm definitely gonna I think it's a really cool method and I think it will make sense for a lot of kids. Yeah. Um, as far as like kids who struggle with adding and like putting things in the right places. Because it's already in the right place. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Um, cool. Uh, that is all I have. Okay. Um, so you're going to send these to yeah, me? Yeah, I'll send, I'll send okay. this folder for you. Thank you. Yeah. All right, great. 